Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. In today's episode, we're talking about how to beat a fighter who's got a big bombing rear punch. In today's episode, we're talking about how to beat a fighter who's known for that big rear punch that knock out a lot of people. And the example of fighters that I like to talk about when it comes to this type of fighter, it would be Dan Henderson, the Derek Lewis's, the Mark Hunts, the Jeremy Stevens fighters who have evolved since then, but they're really known for that one big power punch. So if I need to beat someone like that, obviously I need to be very cautious about that punch because I need to beat them, but at the same time, I need to avoid the big punch and not get knocked out. The biggest example of the big bomb and punch would probably have to be Dan Henderson knocking out Michael Bisping. We all know that big shot is coming. We wait for it. We're waiting, we're waiting, and then all of a sudden when that shot lands, it will probably knock you out. And just remember, when I talk about beating these types of fighter, it's with all about respect. It's not about negativity. I'm talking about these fighters because I respect them. We look up to them. They are legends, they're Hall of Famers. So this is something that in martial arts, you wanna look at someone to beat that style of fighter. To me, that shows more respect, if anything, okay? So let's talk about the big bombing punch. What do I need to be careful of? Well, the first strategy is understanding and managing distance. If I know there's a big bombing punch, the last place I wanna be is in mid-range, right? So. If I'm very close to my opponent, yes, I am safe, right? He can't hit me with the big bomb and punch. If I'm very far and the big punch comes, you can't hit me. So the first strategy when fighting someone with a big bombing punch is understanding that I need to stay away from it. And to stay away from it, I'm either inside or outside. Now, if I stay here and I throw, usually the big punch is gonna happen when I throw something. So in order to stay in or out and avoid being in mid range, I need to be careful just throwing big shots without setting them up. The biggest mistake, especially here, me, I'm gonna put my hand up. The biggest mistake I would be to do against a big bomb and puncher would be to lead with my low kicks and not set them up. If I decide to sit there and you can tell when a fighter's gonna bomb them, you watch tape. Matt's loaded up for the big shot. If I'm throwing right here without setting up my low kicks, that's the timing. They're gonna probably knock me out. The other thing I need to be careful of is jabbing lazy. We saw Ben Askren, okay, I hate to bring it up as a technical example, but Ben Askren threw a lazy jab where if my hand comes down here, that overhand shot is just the perfect shot. Or if I jab and I don't bring my hand back enough, that big looping punch is gonna knock me right out. So I have to set things up. So to stay safe in this range, I'm gonna use a safe jab. I'm gonna use an intelligent lead hand to be able to sit and stay long. So I'm waiting, right? If I know the setup is off the jab, I wait, I wait, the bomb comes, boom, I could evade it and then come back in and counter. So I know the big shot's coming, so I'm gonna get him to throw it. I'm encouraging him to throw it so I could evade it or counter it. So if I'm leading with a big shot, right? If I'm like, oh, I'm gonna fight this guy, I'm gonna get in and fight him power to power, that's kind of the stupid strategy. Because think about it, if I start opening up here and he decides to sit and lay that power, boom, I go to sleep. So what I need to do is I wait. I'm probing, right? I'm using probing punches. And then when he's ready, he's ready, boom, I have paid, come back in, and then I could really attack. Okay, so understanding distance and using probing punches to avoid and get him to throw it is your best strategy. So the two ways you're gonna block a big shot, and remember, we're, we're talking about combat sports as general, so I want those who fight MMA to be able to understand this strategy, and I'm using MMA fighters as an example. So the thing you need to do from the probing shot, the safest way obviously is to move out of the way. Punch comes, I slip out, and then I come back with whatever combinations or strikes that I want. But sometimes the strategy and the timing of that big punch is really good. They've knocked out so many people, it's their thing, right? All of these strategies are hypothetical. In theory, they work, but it depends how confident you are using the strategy, right? I can say, hey, sit in the pocket and block that punch. But when you have Derek Lewis or Mark Hunt bombing a big punch at you, it's easier said than done. So remember, this is in theory, and you have to be a confident fighter to be able to do this. So if I'm 
here now the big punch comes, boom, blocking it and being able to counter is a good strategy, right? So I can slip or block it and then enter into the clinch. So if I'm here, I bomb it, I move out of the way, boom, I slip, I counter attack. And then if he does it again, boom, I block and then I could use it as a clinch enter to attack, okay? So that's the main thing, making sure I defend the shot. Now, with someone with a big bomb and rear punch, right? Think about how you have to set that up. So in order to get the power, you need to step forward, you need to come forward and generate that launching power. So if I'm constantly pushing the big bomber back, it's gonna be a, very, a little bit more difficult, right? They're gonna have to kind of sit back and do it. But while I'm pressuring, you're gonna notice I'm coming, I'm trying to move away from the power side, okay? So obviously, if I'm circling this way, I'm gonna be walking into that big power shot. So I'm circling away. I'm circling away and I'm trying to pressure. But if you notice, look what the first thing I did, right? As I'm pressuring here, my hand comes here. I'm interfering the path of the big shot, right? So if I'm inside here, right away, I go and I attack this hand. Right? But before I go to enter, you notice I'm circling this way and then I grab here. So ideally, I want to be here, what I call a T stance. I got an angle on that. Now there's no way for his big bombing punch to land, right? So circling away from the power, and when I'm here, just making sure I use my hand control. If I'm circling here without using hand control, he can still punch, right? So I need to make sure whether I'm entering to clinch or I'm staying out here and circling away from the power, when I'm ready or anticipate the big shot, I, I go right away and I attack the hands. So if I'm here with Matt playing probe and I anticipate the shot, right away, look, I came right in whether I can pin the hands here. So if Matt's here and I can pin his hands together, great, he can't throw a big bombing shot. Or say I'm a little late and the big shot comes, I'm going right in on bicep, okay? On bicep control, now he can't elbow me, he can't punch me, so if I can get in bicep control, I'm safe for the hand, okay? Now, for my kickboxers, my confident kick fighters, this part is for you because this is my type of strategy when I'm fighting a big bombing puncher. It can be dangerous, but if you're very good at kick fighting, this is the perfect strategy for you. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start kicking the arm. I'm gonna start cracking the shell. So if Matt's hands are here and I'm waiting for the shot, first thing I'm doing is I'm gonna start lifting kicks off the arm. I'm gonna stay long and kick the arm punch, kick, I'm gonna keep kicking and damaging the arm. Even when, say Matt throws a jab, boom, I'm gonna start left kicking the arm. I might go southpaw here, boom, keep chopping and kicking the arm. By kicking the arm over and over, it's gonna make him think twice from opening up. If as soon as he goes to, boom, goes to throw the punch, I kick the arm, I kick the arm, I keep cracking it away. Now, even if he does throw it, guess what? I know how to manage distance. My kick is longer than his punch. So if I throw an incorrect kick with incorrect timing, yes, there's a good chance it's gonna hit me. And the worst part is the switch kick versus the rear hand is one of the most dangerous counters to it. So if I'm switching incorrectly and I'm square, boom, I'm getting knocked out really bad. So when I'm constantly telling you as a beginner, keep this lead side in front of you, keep the lead side in front of you when you throw your switch kick, it's for times like this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure my head is behind me and I'm escaping, and I'm gonna make sure I keep that lead side in front. So now Matt goes to throw the bombing shot, I'm gonna get underneath, boom! Right, look at that, perfect. I'm long, I'm longer, I'm just able to hit the liver. Now if I'm sitting here with Matt, boom, boom, and I keep kicking, look how long I am, right? And if you notice, right away, say we're playing the game, I'm circling here, boom, I kick the arm, I punch, boom. So when I'm moving and playing the game, you notice, I keep slapping, I keep punching the rear hand because this way he has to defend his head and when he defends his head, he can't punch me. So right away, look, I'm here. One, hooks, hooks, boom. One, two, three, boom. I keep kicking the arms. Even if he punches now, boom, I get underneath, right? I kick, I'm circling away, boom. So that's the style. Circle away, keep chopping away on the arms. And when he does throw, great. Keep long and try to kick underneath his arms, right? Block, counter, be able to attack that way. All right, so hope you understand. 
and the grasp and the concepts of this type of fighting because it can be very dangerous, right? I'm a big believer in, as a fighter, you should have one thing that you're really good at, right? I think it's important because it gets fans really excited. Every time Dan Henderson fought, we got excited. He sat there, he waited, and we just waited for that opportunity because when, he, when we knew it landed, we got a knockout. We got that spectacular entertainment we signed up for. All right, so hope you enjoyed today's episode on how to beat a big rear punch power hitter. And these strategies, remember, it's about confidence. If you're scared to get hit, these strategies are gonna be very hard to do. So develop the confidence, work on defense where your opponents are punching you, getting comfortable. But ideally, in all things fighting, it's about managing distance. So no different than defending this shot.